morning, everybody. It's good to see you here this morning. Um, welcome, and welcome to everybody online this morning. If you'd like to stand, um, we're going to start with um, a beautiful song. This is Amazing Grace. This is Amazing Love. We're so grateful, Lord, um, for all who you are and for all that you are, Lord. Glorify your name. Thank you, Lord. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of all kings. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breath? amazing grace. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross. You would lay down your life that I would be set free. Sing for all that you've done for me. 
thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, there is none like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your amazing love and your amazing grace. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. What an amazing God we serve this morning. Absolutely fantastic uh, to see you all here this morning. But I want us to understand what we're singing this morning. Oh, praise his name forevermore. Endless days we will sing your praise. What does that mean? It's talking about forevermore, not just in this life, but the next life, that we can enjoy praise with him forevermore. And for endless days we'll sing your praise. You know, we sometimes sing that and we just think about today and our lifespan on this earth. But I don't want you to know that what we're singing is the joy of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that we can praise his name forevermore. And we can sing his praise endlessly each and every day. I believe that this morning. How about you guys? I'm so excited about what God can do and what God stirs up in me and what God's done through his crazy love for me. God's crazy love for me. You know, I, I've said it before, but the fact that God poured out his love upon me at the age of 29, took me and just ignored my past and moved me into a place of that crazy love where he died for me on the, upon the cross so that I could sing praise his name forevermore. I want that for everybody to know that this morning. Online, whoever watches back online, I want to know that, that we can praise God forevermore because he is awesome, he is great. I'm not just saying that to build everybody up. It's what I believe. You might sense that. I could get excited about who God is and what God does in our lives. We've got a dedication coming up this morning. We're just going to, I'd just like to go back through that song again for a moment. We'll take up the offering. That's okay. Uh, just testing Lorraine and going off script just so we can keep everybody on their toes. Appreciate it. Thank you. She's well <laughs> capable of doing that. So we're going to take up our offering this morning. And it's a, a continuation of our act of praise and worship to God where we sow into the kingdom of God and we sow into the storehouse so that we as a church can meet the needs of the community and the projects that we serve overseas. And uh, so this is what we do. If you're visiting with us this morning, don't feel under any pressure. Please let the basket pass you by. We're not here. Uh, we're just glad to see you in the building. We're glad to see you praising God with us. And I trust God to touch you and his presence will be, become real to you this morning. Uh, but if you want to contribute, if you want to plant into the kingdom of God, then please do. I'm not trying to deny you the opportunity, but it's not a three-line whip from us. So we're going to take up our offering right now as we sing this song. And as we come to a close, we'll start the dedication from that point. Amen. my mind to Calvary where Jesus
Hallelujah. I love that song. An amazing song. If you want to take a break, guys, just take a pew for a second. You never know how long I'm going to be, do you? So we'll just uh, take the weight off your legs for a moment. Just before I start the dedication, that scripture just come to me from John 14, 1 to 6, as I was talking about evermore, praising God endlessly. But that's the scripture about saying, if you believed in God, believe in me. I've gone to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would not have told you I've gone to prepare a place for you. And what I want to say that about this morning, I just saw a sign. There's, we, you know, if you're trying to book a holiday in Cornwall during the school holiday period, you get no vacancies, no room at the inn. But I want to tell you, there's never a no vacancy sign on heaven for those that believe. It's building an endless kingdom for you and me to share so that we can sing to him forevermore, to be with him and be in that place. There's never a no vacancy sign on that door. So if you believe in him, there's hope. There's a trust and a faith that we have an eternity to spend with him. And I'd encourage you to walk in that trust, to walk in that faith and to walk in that knowledge that there's a place for you in heaven this morning. It's, and I, I, I don't, I'm not going to attempt to describe it it's not my job this morning to do that, but it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing place because God's going to be there and I'm going to sing forevermore, for all time, to my gracious God who touched my life. And we're going to pray this morning for Tobias. It's Tobias' dedication. Tobias Norman James Raymond, to give him his full, to his full name. Um, we couldn't fit it on the certificate, so it just says James Raymond, but we know that's his, that's his full name this morning. And we're just welcoming Holly and Jordan and the family this morning that's come to stand with them to share in this dedication, this opportunity this morning to celebrate Tobias and also to celebrate his life and also to offer him back to God this morning. And we're going to do that this morning together. We're going to present Tobias before God and the church family. I'm going to ask the uh, family members to just to uh, say a vow about what they will try to the best of their ability, because none of us are perfect, are we? To the best of their ability to bring Tobias up. And we as a church family, this community that they join and they're with, this church family, we're going to make a commitment to support them in helping Tobias come up and walk in the things of the kingdom of God and be all that God's created him to be. He's got a wonderful smile. It's going to be a, 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 a girl stealer when he gets older, I'm sure it is. He's got a wonderful, wonderful smile. So we'll acknowledge your part, Holly and Jordan, with a, with a vow and we'll ask people from the church and then I'll offer... A blessing over it and then there'll be an opportunity for people who want to pray to come and stand with the family and to pray for Tobias and offer him before God. And we might just share a little bit of a story uh, with Holly's permission of how Tobias came to be and what a transformation that birth has made in her life when they thought they'd be barren. 
But praying to God, just like someone in the Bible, that she would serve him, give him back to God, should they have a child, and they got a child, and Holly did exactly that. Gave her life, turned her life around, dedicated it to God. She's on a good journey, and you're doing a great, wonderful job as a mum, and bringing Tobias up with Jordan. So we should celebrate that, and what God has done in your life. So come on up, Holly and Jordan. It's amazing. Oh, I didn't see it. You had a bib on earlier, didn't you? I didn't see it. Come on this way a little bit. Come on this way a little bit. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures for you, Tobias. I know you're going to be really interested in these, aren't you? But but we're we're going to keep telling you about these scriptures when you get older. I'm going to use 1 Samuel 1, 26, 28. It says, And she said to him, Pardon me, Lord, as surely as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you, praying to the Lord. I prayed for this child, Holly prayed for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked. So I now give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he'll be given over to you, Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. And I think that's a really appropriate scripture based on your testimony and how God has touched your life and brought this young, happy chap into this place. It's going to be fun later. You're going to be A for me, aren't you? It's going to be wonderful. And I've got another scripture as well which I'd like to read. Um, because it, it's, it's how Christ received children. It's how we, in our heart, need to receive children. Because, you know, children, people often say, children are the future. And I want to tell you, they might be in the future, but they're here today to make a difference in our lives, to add value to this place right now. They're here for a reason and a purpose, not just the church of the future, but the church of the present. And we need to encourage them to be the church of the present. Bring on all the gifts. You youngsters on the front row, you've got a part to play in this church. You're valuable. And I want to encourage you to be all that God's created you to be. And the two behind you there, we just want to encourage you and give you opportunity to grow into all that God has created you to be. Amen? So... Jesus, in Mark 9, he said, He took a little child whom he placed among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. So when we welcome him this morning, we welcome Jesus into this place. All right? You know, I'm trying to emphasize the words that we say mean something. They're not just words on a piece of paper. They mean something in here. They certainly mean something to me, and I know they mean something to you guys out there. This is important to dedicate, to bias to the Lord. And then when you're old enough, you'll make your own decision, and let's hope you've got wise by that time and you make the right decision. But it's entirely up to you. We'll give you all the support you need in order to get to that place and be all that God's created you to be. Amen? Amen? Stop talking, Pastor Is that what you're saying? Is that what you're saying? Come on, then. We'll, We'll move on. And say, so I'm going to ask a vow from the two of you as parents. Then I'm going to come to the church and ask for you guys to offer your support. You, look, this is not a free line whip. You don't have to say we do if you don't, right? This is important that as a family we support Holly, Jordan on this journey to support them, be there for them. We're not trying to run their life. We're not trying to be their grandparents. They've got their own natural grandparents for that. But we're trying to help and speak wisdom and encouragement into their lives to cause them to grow into all that God wants them to be. And I can't see this guy presenting any tough challenges. (laughs) Hey, do you? Did we say that about all our children? (laughs) And it's true. It's true. So I'm going to ask you something, and I'd like you to respond if you're willing. If it goes like rehearsal about 20 minutes ago, we should be all right, shouldn't we? All right, so this is the question. In presenting Tobias to the Lord, do you promise, in reliance on divine grace given to us to teach Tobias the truth and beliefs and duties of the Christian faith, and by prayer, teaching, and example, to bring Tobias up in the faith and instruction of the Lord? It's amazing. We do. Now, I'm going to turn to you guys now. This is important now. That you guys, um, I've certainly offered my support to them in, in this already, but I'll be saying this again. But do you, members of the church, if you can answer, we will. I'd appreciate it. 
Do you as members of this church agree to encourage Holly and Jordan to stand with them and to seek to bring Tobias up in a Christian faith to help them build them and grow in the light of his life through their faith and trust in Jesus Christ who we believe is the light of the world. We did. Brilliant. That was good, wasn't it? Oh. Oh, dear. I turned around at the wrong time. So, look, if I can invite people who want to pray and offer their prayers, can I have you a minute? Can I? I'm going to put my glasses down because I'll lose them, won't I? We will. <laughs> hey, we're just going to walk you around the church, aren't we? Because here's Mummy and Daddy, and I think Grandma's over there, if, that, if I've got that right. Okay. And we're just going to pray a blessing over you and wander around. And they just show you to the church. And so they've all seen you. But we're presenting you to the church. And we're presenting you back to God so that they, you may be all that you've, God created you to be. Whatever that may be, we don't know yet. But we just stand by you, Tobias, and walk with you and build you and help you to grow the things of the kingdom of God. Amen. Lord, we thank you for Tobias, Lord. We pray a blessing upon his life, Lord God. We pray your anointing upon him, Lord God, your grace and your mercy and your presence upon him, Lord God, that he will grow uh, naturally, but also grow in the things of the kingdom of God, to be all that you've created him to be, that he'll, he'll walk and he'll find the truth for himself, Lord God, and one day will decide he wants to make that decision for himself, Lord God. We pray that, pray your protection over him, Lord God, protection over the family, Lord God, protection over Tobias, Lord God. There'll be trouble in life, there'll be things come along, but Lord, I pray for your presence and your strength and your wisdom to, to roll through those things, but always to turn to God for help and the wisdom in Jesus Christ to see you through those moments and cause you to grow and cause you to grow in that family in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I think that's my signal. So, guys, if you want to pray. It's done ever so well. Father, we thank you for this wonderful gift yeah. that you've bestowed on this couple. Lord, everything we have comes from you. It does. And your scriptures declare that you are well able to keep that which we commit to you. And so, Lord, this child has been committed to you. And we believe and we know that you will keep this young man. Yeah. Because we are persuaded that your word is the truth yeah. and that you stand by your word. Amen. And as this couple have brought this child to you, we believe he will be kept, he will be nurtured, and he will come to that point in his own life where he chooses to follow you for himself, Lord, not because of family, but for, for his own sake. And so, Lord, we thank you for him, Lord. We pray that yes, you will do, bless sir. him with health and strength all the days of his life. Yeah. We thank you again, your word says, Lord, that you pursue us and that all the days of his life he will dwell in the house of the Lord. Yeah. And so, Lord, we speak this over this child, Lord. We thank you for him. What a delightful gift. Yeah. Bless Holly and her partner, Lord. Bless them, Lord. Yeah. In Jesus' name, strengthen them as parents. Lord, in the difficult times, Lord, when it's not easy to make those right decisions, we pray for your wisdom and guidance. We pray, Lord, that the church here will be supportive in any way that we can be, Lord, so that this young man and uh, this young child will grow up to know you. We ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Your anointing flow. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity of welcoming Tobias into the family of God. We thank you, Lord, that he is a new generation and your love extends to all generations. Thank you, Jesus, as well, that Tobias means in Greek, God is good. And we say you're good all the time. So we pray for Holly, Jordan, and the family here this morning. We pray that you will bless them, that you will keep them. 
your hand will be upon them, that Tobias will be in good health, yeah. good strength, he will be strong and serve you. We honour you, Lord, this morning in this and thank you for all you've done yeah. and for all that you're going to do because surely goodness and mercy will follow Tobias all the days of his life mm. and the parents too. So, Lord, we just praise you. Amen. Amen. Finally, Lord, we, Tobias, we pray the Lord's face shine upon you. It's gracious to you, turn towards you, bless you this day, the next day, and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right, thank you guys. Give him a big round of applause. It's not easy. He's been amazing. I'll sign my notes if you want to sell them off later. Where's the rain? Where's the team? I want to sing a particular song, which I think is uh, appropriate after dedication, Holy Forever. And I think it's important we sing this and to stand up if you're able to and to join in this praise. And then we'll get ready for the word of God from our drummer, Pastor <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> Multitasking, uh, as always. Sorry, we have a technical difficulty. Now, if you'd like to stand, um, the words in this song are absolutely beautiful. Jesus, your name is the highest, your name is the greatest, and your name stands above them all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. generations falling down in worship to sing the song of ages to the Lamb. And all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the Lamb. Your
Hallelujah. Holy forever. What a wonderful song. It's just amazing if we think about the words that we're singing to an awesome God. A place where we can get into his presence. Sing holy, holy, holy. Amazing. Thank you, team. I appreciate that for your ministry this morning. Lord, we want to pray this morning. Thank you for the offering, Lord, into the storehouse. May we be wise, Lord, in how we plant it back into this community and the wider community in which we serve, Lord God. May we know the right projects, the right people, the right need in order to serve them with the love of Christ in a practical, open way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, are you ready for the word of God this morning? I certainly am. So, you know, it's a great, I'm expecting a share. Don't forget, we've only got three more weeks before we change to Passion Church. Big day coming up when uh, we, we uh, I've just been so encouraged by the encouragement I've had back from what we're doing and where God's taking us and the confirmation after confirmation about the plan and the vision of what God is doing. So three weeks. So it's the first week in July. We will change over to Passion Church. The signage should be done. Everything should be in place. And I'm really excited about that. And I'm even more excited to hear Daniel preach this morning. A guy who I think has been, I feel like he's been with us forever. And he has in the family of God. But, you know, with us is just it's such a joy, Daniel, to have you with us. Such an honor to walk with you and to be in the same place as you, serving God, serving out his vision. And we're really looking forward to what. Uh, you've got to share this morning. So give him a welcome, Pastor Daniel. Thank you, Pastor Glenn, for that. Brilliant. Praise God. How's everyone doing? All right? It's been such a wonderful service so far, hasn't it? I hope I can keep it that way. <laughs> Praise God. You know, um, introductions are important. Um, not only are they important, but they count as well. You know, how we introduce people matters. So when I introduce somebody and I say to the person I'm introducing that person to, if I say this person is a horrible person, <laughs> before even that person had met this person, now I've planted that seed of assumption. And now that person's got a preconceived idea of what this person I'm introducing to is like. So, you know, all the way through the Gospels, what the Gospel writers are doing, they're trying to introduce Jesus to the readers. And so in Gospel of Mark in particular, Mark introduces Jesus as the teacher. And he also introduces Jesus as the healer. But he does not stop. That he introduces Jesus as the miracle worker. You see, and the question I suppose we can all ask ourselves is this. What kind of introduction of Jesus are we giving to the world? What kind of introduction of church are we giving to the world? So this morning I want to talk to us about faith, if that's all right. And I'm, I've entitled my message, Shift Your Faith. Look at your neighbor and say to that person, shift your faith. Come on, say it with faith. Come on, church. Amen to that. Amen. Shift your faith. And I'm going to read a verse, a passage of scripture found in Gospel of Mark chapter 2. If, you, if you're taking notes, that's great. If you've got your hard copy Bible, that's great. If you've got your phone, whatever. But we're going to read it together. Mark chapter 2, and we're going to read from verse 1 to verse 12. A few days later, Jesus again entered Capernaum. I always struggle with that word. Capernaum. The people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such a large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing bringing to him a paralyzed man, carried by four of them, since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it, and then, Lord, the mat the man was lying on. These guys were crazy. When Jesus saw their faith, they said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the teachers of the law, you've got to love the teachers of the law, eh? Now some teachers of the law were sitting there. They're everywhere. They're everywhere, all right? Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, this is what I love about it, thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? 
You get them. He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. So that's why our motives matters, you see. And he said to them, why are you, ta- why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man? Your sins are forgiven. Or to say, get up and take up your mat and walk. But I want, to, but I want you to know that the Son of Man, listen to this church, The Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He forgives sins. Amen. And he says, so he said to the man, if I tell you, get up and take up your mat and go home. He said to the man, I'll tell you, get up, take up your mat and go home. He got up, took took his mat and walked out in full view. I love that. He didn't just walk out, but he walked out in full view. He wanted everybody to see. He walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God. Amen. And they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this before. I love, love that. What a powerful account found in Gospel of Mark. See, we read about, here we read about the guys who carried their paralyzed friend to Jesus. They find out that Jesus was in town, and he was healing everybody of everything. Broken legs. Withered hands, leprosy, heart conditions, issue of blood, you name it. He was healing them all. So these guys get this crazy idea. What if we take our friend to see Jesus? They get this crazy idea. What if we take our friend to see Jesus? And But not only that, you see, their crazy idea suddenly turned into this crazy faith. This crazy idea suddenly turned into this crazy faith. They thought if blind received their sight, if, blame, if, if lame began to walk, and those who had leprosy were cleansed, surely our friend will be able to walk again. You see, this man was paralyzed. And he was probably considered insignificant in his society, in his community. Not only that, but he was probably considered useless. But not only that, let me go, go a bit further to edge. Maybe purposeless, a man with no purpose, a man with no future, a man with no hope, a man with no destiny. He was good for nothing maybe or forgotten about in his community. But yet his friends, they were determined to take him to Jesus. They were determined to take him to Jesus. You see, what took place in them was this momentum of faith. Momentum of faith. Not just a moment or an inspiration of faith, but rather a momentum of faith. Faith began to rise in them. Hope began to rise in them. You see, something began to stir in them. As Pastor Glenn was talking about earlier on, something began to stir in them. They just didn't pray their part. Listen to this. We're so good at praying our part, aren't we? Let me pray for you. I'll pray for you. They didn't just pray their part, but rather they played their part. That's the difference, church. It's not good just praying our part. If we are able to, let's play our part as well. They played their part. They began to move in active faith. They began to move in active faith, not just praying faith. We all have praying faith. We love to pray. Don't get me wrong. We need men and women of God who pray in faith, but we also need men and women of God who can move in faith See, the Bible does not tell us if the paralyzed man had any faith when we read that account. But what the Bible does remind us that is the faith of his friends. Faith of his friends. You see, maybe he had doubts. Maybe he tried everything. All the medications out there. He's been to see different doctors. He's been to see different therapists. He's been to see different counselors. He's been and he's tried all different dodgy medicines out there. Right? Legal and illegal. Okay, just to make it clear. But then his friends, they're persistent. They're like, come on. He's like, oh, I've tried them all. Nothing works, man. It's just I've tried them all. But his friends are like, come on. We've heard about Jesus. And he, he's a miracle-working God, so they say. Let's, t- let's go and see him. But he's like, can you see me? Do you think I can walk? But no, don't worry about it. We'll take you to see Jesus. We'll take you to see Jesus. Here's the thing, you see. Just having faith isn't enough. They had to put in some work as well. They had to use their physical muscles. Not only that, but here's the powerful thing. They had to work together as a team. This is why unity in the church is important. 
They had to work together as a team. We, it's good to have passion. It's good to be passionate, passionate in different areas of our lives, passionate in our faith, passionate in our work, everything. But also, corporately, we have to combine our passion together and walk and move in this momentum of faith where two or three are gathered in my name, the Word of God says, and where brothers dwell in unity. God commands his blessings. You see, here's the thing, right? I'm going to say this. They weren't, they weren't lazy in their faith. We love this idea of faith, but I want to propose to us different levels of faith, if you like, or different types of faith. And one of the faith that sometimes lingers in our belief system is the lazy faith. Lazy faith. You see, the lazy faith just prays for stuff, but does not put no substance to it. Right? Lazy faith wants the spiritual things to happen, but does not put in the work of actually seeking God. Had they operated in the realm of lazy faith, they could have said, listen, Jesus is walking by the town. I'm going to lay my hands on you and I'm going to pray for you. But they had different level of faith, different kind of faith. Their faith was rather crazy faith, if you like, active faith. So all of a sudden, when they heard this news that Jesus was in town, and when they saw his friend was in need, they said, we're going to take you to Jesus. They didn't say, we're going to pray for healing. They didn't say, we're going to do this and that. We need to pray for healing. We need to do all of that sort of stuff. But when needed, we have to move in faith. We have to step, we have to step out in faith. And this was an opportunity for them to move in the active faith, which caused these guys to pick him up and carry him to Jesus. Pick him up and carry him to Jesus. The, here's the beautiful thing. The story does not end there. You see, they get to the house, and guess what? The house is full. The house is full. There is no way they can get to inside the house. And had they operated in lazy faith, they could have easily said, Oh, you know, we've tried. We tried taking it to Jesus. Well, look at that, mate. The house is full. Let's go back. But they're like, no, one of the, one of the mates I bet probably went, Do you know what? Like, we've come this far. Why not go the extra mile? So they're looking for different passages where they're looking for different ways to get into the house. And mind you, this house does not belong to them. It's not like this is their property. They're trespassing here. Right? This isn't their property. They're trespassing here. And see, some of the obstacles that maybe you and me were up against right now is maybe a proof that we're exactly where we're supposed to be. And here's the, here's the, here's the faith activating truth. But we have to keep moving forward. We have to keep moving forward. You see, sometimes in our journey of faith, when we hit that brick wall, we say to ourselves, oh, this is it, maybe. It's just like maybe this isn't meant for me. This isn't where God wants. This isn't what God wants for me. But what if those obstacles, and what if, if we go back to last week's sermon, what if the storms are actually indicators that you are in the will of God? What if all the waves and all the winds and all the storms are actually an indication that you are moving into the things of God and you are so close to the breakthrough that you so heartfully been praying for. And what if the, it is the enemy's tactics that's wanting to discourage you and wanting you to take that step backwards rather than taking those steps forwards? See, I want to challenge this. One attempt is not enough. One attempt is not enough. We have to keep pushing. We have to keep persevering, persevering. See, restoration takes time. Breakthrough takes time. Just attending one prayer meeting is not enough. Miracles, they take time. Healing takes time. Transformation takes time. So I want to encourage us, let's not lose heart. Let's not lose heart. Whatever that you've been going through right now, and maybe everything within you is crying out, I can't take this anymore, I can't take, I can't take a step forward anymore, but I want to encourage you, don't stop there. Keep moving forward. Keep moving forward. You see, the word you speak in faith brings momentum. We've been going through different declarations this past, past few weeks. And you see, what tends to happen is when we're declaring in faith, what that does is it activates this momentum of faith. Something in the heavenly, something in the spiritual begins to take shape. So every time when we're declaring in faith, we're moving in that movement of faith. You see, our journey is a journey of faith, and we continue to believe for the miraculous, 
Okay, here's the thing. We continue to believe for the miraculous, but let's not stop there. Let's continue to move in the miraculous as well. Believing is one thing, but we have to move as well. You see, you can believe that, you know, kind of like taking uh, that tablet that the doctors, doctors prescribed you is going to bring about some form of relief. But if you don't take it, it's not going to happen, is it? Nothing's going to happen. You, you can't just look at that medicine and say, I believe it, I'm going to heal, be healed. Now you have to take the medicine that doc- doctors have prescribed you. It's the same thing. Looking at a delicious food isn't going to fill your hunger. <laughs> See, when you see something nice, you have to eat it. Then you're full. And believing is one thing. Let's continue to believe, church. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not belief. Let's continue to believe. I mean, let's our believing level be 1,000%. But let our moving level be 10,000%. Amen? We believe and we move together. So here's the real question. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? See, these friends, they really wanted their friend to receive his healing. So they went to the roof and they said, do you know what? Let's tear off the roof as if it was their property. Let's tear off the roof. We'll think about the consequences later. But let's just get him to Jesus. And you see, sometimes in our British culture, I think we're too polite. We're very polite. This may be not the right thing to say, but let's be aggressive in our faith, church. Come on, let's be aggressive in our faith. Let's be like the characters in the Bible. Let's be like Jacob. God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. He was aggressive. God, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. God, I'm not letting you go until you bless my family. God, I'm not letting you go until you restore my family. God, I'm not letting you go until you restore this broken family. God, I'm not letting you go. We need that aggressive faith back again, church. We're too gentle. God, I'm not letting you go. No, everything within you, this crazy faith, this this active faith. God, I'm not leaving this place until you bless me. God, I'm not leaving. God, I'm not going to stop trying until I see restoration taking place in my family. God, I'm not going to stop trying until I receive that job you promised me that you were going to bless me with. We have to have that faith, church. See, someone along the journey, we've just become too too polite in our faith. You see, the word of God reminds us, take it by force. The kingdom of God is at hand. And take it by force, church. That blessing of yours. Take it by force. I was speaking, I was preaching on this a couple of weeks ago, one eye. The enemy will try to rob it off you, but you have to be aggressive. I'm not going to let no lies of the enemy distort my peace. I'm not going to let no lies of the enemy rob me of my joy. I'm not going to let no lies of whatever comes my way rob me of the blessing that God has in store for me. Have that faith, church. Let's have that faith. And these guys will like, we're not going to let no crowd stop us from going to see Jesus. We're not going to let no crowd stop us from going to see Jesus. You see, lazy faith would have said, this is it. We've hit the brick wall. But the crazy faith said, here, pass me the toolbox. <laughs> pass me the toolbox, mate. Had Steve been there, he would have been there with a the sledgehammer. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> But, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Active faith, crazy faith. Let's tear off the roof, church. Not f- physically this roof, all right? <laughs> we, we don't want any yeah, news from the local police ringing us. <laughs> you know that someone's been trespassing the property and doing some crazy stuff. Have crazy faith, all right? Let's tear off the roof. Let's tear off the roof, church. So I want to propose to you three things we can see happening in this account. The first thing is this. They didn't do it for the show. No credit, no problem. No credit or no problem. They didn't do it for the show. See, had they wanted to, they could have said, hey, come on. Had they had the iPhone and Samsung back in the day, they would have said, hey, mate, I'm going to do this. Will you quickly film me, please? <laughs> Put it on Facebook, get about so many hundred likes and thousands of views and all that. You know, but they didn't do it for the show. Had they been in there for the show, they would have just left. But something in them. And can I say this, church? We're not here for the show. God, God's not placed us in this community for the show. We're here to bring about a change in our community. We're here to bring about restoration in our community. 
We're here to bring about transformation in our community. We're here to bring about support and healing for our community. Because people in our community, they're hurting and they need healing. They're hurt. They've got scars. Things are messy. And we're here not just to give them a big show, but we're here to bring about that healing for our community. Can anybody say amen? amen. We're here to bring about that healing for our community. Yeah. See, You see, when we read this account, you'll notice that the Bible never reveals the names of the men who had active faith for their friend's life-changing miracle. They simply wanted his friend to receive his healing. And here's another powerful thing as well. They did not, when they were in the presence of Jesus, they did not say, Jesus, while you're at it, will you do this for me as well? They didn't say that. But they were there just for, his friend, for their friends. They were like, it's just like, I don't need anything. Yes, I've got my needs. Yes, I've got my, my own things I need sorting. But Lord, we're here for our friend. And you know, can I say this, right? When we come to Jesus with selfless faith, not selfish faith. We talked about lazy faith, but sometimes we can dwell into selfish faith where it becomes all about me and what I can receive from the kingdom of God. You see, but these guys approached to Jesus with selfless faith. And in their selfless faith, the man who was paralyzed received his healing. But can I go a bit deeper into this? When we approach God with selfless faith, when we bring other people's needs before God, our needs get met as well. That's just, that's, that's just how kingdom works. When we begin to cry out for the needs of others, God begins to meet our own need. And that's the beauty of the gospel. That's the beauty of the presence of God. When we're in his presence and when we bring it all before God, God sees the act of our hearts. Just what he said in that scripture. God saw what these religious guys were thinking in their hearts. And God saw what these men who brought their paralyzed friend to Jesus had in their hearts. So when we approach to God with selfless faith, God does the miraculous. Secondly, they chose faith over feelings. They chose faith over feelings. See, they did not focus on what people would say. This is what I said about earlier on about being polite. We have to be crazy, guys. We have to be crazy. It's just like, it's just, let me say this in the most polite way. I don't care what people think of me when I'm worshiping Jesus. It's just like, it's just, if they look at me, they're like, oh, what's this guy? Is he crazy? I'm just, yeah, I'll, I'll go for it. Let's go for it. Let's not think, let's not get consumed about what other people think about us. This is the thing I was saying about introduction earlier on. Our identity is not based upon what other people think of us, but our identity is deep-rootedly based upon what the Word of God says, who we are in Christ. And you see, we have to learn to operate in faith and, and be less overwhelmed by our feelings, which is a difficult task, I understand. And, and this is a beautiful definition my friend was once passed it on to me. See, me and him, we talk about faith, um, and it's just like, he, he, it's just, and that's why it's all about iron sharpens iron, the word of God says. So does one good company sharpens another good person. And, um, you know, this is the explanation he gave me. I said, so how would you explain faith? And he's like, it's simple, man. That's like, what, what do you mean it's simple? He says, for me, faith is forsaking all, I choose him. F-A-I-T-H, if I can spell it right. F stands for forsaking, A stands for all. Forsaking all, I choose. Trust him. I says, wow, that's a beautiful description of faith. Forsaking all, I trust him. Come on, church, say it with me. Forsaking all, I trust him. That's what it's about. Forsaking my feelings, forsaking how I feel, forsaking what people think about me, forsaking it all, pushing it all aside. I trust him. My future is going to be good. I trust him regardless of whatever I see in front of me. Your future is going to be good if you continue to trust in him. Your children, they're going to grow up in the Lord if you continue to trust in him. Whatever path they're on right now, continue to trust in him because he will make everything work together for good for those who continue to put their trust in him. Amen. You see, right now, we're looking around and we might be thinking, oh, we're happy with this. But I'm going to say this. 
me, Glenn and Mark, we talk about this all the time, you know, it's just like, and Paul and everybody, every one of us, you know. What are we seeing right now is just the beginning. You see, name change, we're not bringing in the name change just for the sake of bringing in the name change. We believe we heard from God, and the name change is part of that. And see, not only that, right, but this is just the beginning of what God is doing and is about to do. You see, I'm going to declare this in faith. We're going to have one of the most thriving youth ministries slash young adults ministries in the area. Not only that, but we're going to have one of the greatest over 60s gatherings in the area. Not only that, but we're going to have one of the greatest men and women's ministry taking place in the area. Not only that, but we will be facilitating and we will be meeting the needs of people in this area for Jesus. Because God has placed us here to be his light for his community. Amen. Amen. And if we think this is it, guys, this building is not going to be enough for what God is about to do. I don't hear, amen. This building is not going to be enough for what God is about to do, amen. We're going to have several locations. We're going to, it's just the kingdom of God is advancing. And you see, like, this building won't be enough to facilitate the needs of our community. God is expanding his territory, amen. His kingdom for his praise and for his glory. Buckle up, church. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. It might sound crazy, but it's only crazy until it happens. Until it happens. A few years from now, we'll be looking back. Wow, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. This is my final point, guys, and we'll bring it to a close. They were willing to go the extra mile. Amen. Everybody say, I'm willing to go the extra mile. <laughs> Come on. Say it like a minute. I'm, go- I'm going to. I am willing to go the extra mile. Amen. There you go, in the presence, in his presence, we've said, our one attempt is not enough. Guys, our one attempt is not enough. Let's continue to persevere. I love this Proverbs, Proverbs 24, uh, verse 16. It says, for a righteous man may fall seven times, they rise again. Amen. A righteous woman may fall seven times, but they rise again. A righteous community may fall many times, but they rise again. This is about rising again. Third day. Christ rose again. And if that same spirit that, ro- that raised Christ from the dead lives in each and every one of us, then we've got this rising spirit in us. Regardless of how we fall, we keep rising up. We keep bouncing back up more powerful, more in tune with the spirit of God. This is it, guys. The enemy will want you down. And once he's down, he will mock you. He will say, I told you. What's the point? But you have to keep getting back up. And keep persevering, keep moving forward. One attempt is not enough. See, in verse 12, he says he got up. He got up. He, maybe he tried many times, don't you think? He tried getting up many times. But every time he tried to get up, it didn't work for me. Or it didn't work for him, rather. But he got up. And not only he got up, he took his mat and walked out in full view of them all. He's like, oh, you guys have seen me try many times. But you weren't there to support me. You guys have seen me do it many times. But I'm sure there were lots of mockers. I'm sure there were a lot of people who were looking down. And then there were lots of people who were always saying things to him. But on this particular day, he got up. He took his mat with his chest puffed up. He said, whoa, this has never happened to me before. And he walked out in full view of them all because the scripture says the religious leaders were there and they were probably looking down on him. And they're like, oh, surely what Jesus is doing, this is, what's this? This is blasphemy. It's just blasphemy. Come on, who dances in church? It's blasphemy. Who lifts up their hands in worship? It's, it's crazy. But I tell you what, the scripture reminds us that he got up. And that's a word for someone here this morning. It's time for you to get up. Maybe you've been on the floor. And maybe you feel like you've got no strength in you to get back up again. But the word of the Lord says this morning is, come on, my son. Come on, my daughter. Get back up. Every time when my soul falls down, I don't say to him, look at you. I, told you, I don't mock him. I say, come on, Joshua, get up. I say to him, come on, get up. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Get up. And that's how 
God to us. Every time we fall down. Come on, Daniel, get up. Come on, Teresa, get up. Come on, Kim, get up. Come on, Matthew, get up. Get up. Come on, church, get up. Don't stay there. Don't stay there because that's not where you belong. Get up. Get up. It's time for the church of God to get up. Amen. It's time for the church of God to rise up again. You see, he was healed in the presence of God. And our job is to take people in his presence. Just like these guys. They were willing to go the extra mile. And church, there are going to be times where we have to be willing to go the extra mile. We have to go the extra mile for our loved ones. The person that you've been trying to help. And maybe that person is not very positive in receiving the help. You have to keep trying. Don't give up on that person. Don't give up on that person. Because someone didn't give up on me. My mom never gave up on me. She used to say to me, son, one day you'll preach the word. I don't know what that meant. <laughs> son, one day you'll worship Jesus. I'm like, didn't know what that meant. I was doing my own thing. I was happy the way I was. But I was very broken on the inside. I was covering it all up. But my mom kept saying to me, Daniel, one day you're going to come to the Lord. One day you're going to receive your salvation. One day you're going to preach the word of God. She kept prophesying into my life. She kept declaring in faith over my life. And here I am, 12 years later. And because she never gave up on me. Amen. She kept saying to me, come on, Daniel, get up. And sometimes we have to declare that to our souls. Why are you worried? Come on, Daniel, get up. Get up. We have to be aggressive, guys. There is no other way. Shake up, Daniel. Get up. Why are you downcast? David would say to his own soul, King David in the Psalms, why are you downcast? It's time to get up. Rejoice in the Lord. My soul, why are you downcast? Rise up. Rise up. See, it's time to shift our faith. We've all got faith. But maybe we're stuck in that lazy faith. It's time to shift our faith to crazy faith. Maybe... Maybe unintentionally, we've settled for selfish faith, only thinking about all our own personal world. And maybe it's time for us to shift our faith to selfless, rather crazy faith. See, maybe we're in that waiting faith, faith at the moment, where we're praying for stuff, we're waiting for stuff, but nothing's happening. It's time for the church of God to move in the crazy faith. It's time to shift our faith and move in signs, wonders, and miracles. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, if you agree with me, say a big amen. 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 Praise God. Should we all stand? We're going to pray together. Praise God. I'm going to ask Lorraine and the team to get ready as one. Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence amongst us today, Lord. Lord, I pray as we continue to move in faith and as we continue to, Lord God, acknowledge you and to trust in you, Lord, just as that description, as we continue to forsake all and trust in you, help us, Lord God, in our journey. Give us the strength to not get distracted, but to fully surrender our all to you, knowing that you are in control and knowing that you will make all things together work for good. So, Lord God, be with us. Strengthen us in our journey as we continue to trust you and you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, church. Thank you, Daniel. If we need an introduction for Jesus, the words in this, um, the chorus of this song, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. You're my light in the darkness. That is who you are. So may we, as we sing this, may we not just sing it, but may we declare that and just declare that over circumstances, over our families and our communities, that he is going to make a way. He's going to bring the breakthrough, the restoration and the miracles in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
That is who you are. Promise keeper, miracle worker, provides through the power of his spirit for our needs. What a word this morning for us to take away and to allow to permeate into our spirit and to be encouraged to be different things. We'll speak to different people. That's how the word of God works. It's not on one level, it's always on a multi-level, speaking directly to the needs that you and I have in our lives. I would encourage you from what Daniel said this morning to, uh, you know, that, that phrase of get up, to be ready to get up. And uh, I believe that, you know, when a guy rolled his mat up, he didn't just leave his mat, did he? He still took his mat with him because there's a value in that. But, you know, God wants us to get up and to move forward, to move the things of God this morning. And if you need a touch in your body, I believe God is saying, now is the time. My spirit can move among you to touch your body, to heal you and to restore you, that you can get up and do the things that God is asking you to do. But let's not make excuses. I'm not criticizing. I'm trying to encourage. Because I point the finger at me. I make so many excuses when I'm asking God to do things. But you know, God wants to move in our life today to be determined. You know, in Acts 12, verse 16, it's part of what we're doing in this season of change is that when we pray, be expectant. They prayed for Peter to be released from prison. They kept on praying and praying and praying. And when you get to verse 16, Peter knocks on the door and they answered the door, didn't believe the servant girl, but when they eventually asked it, they said they were astonished. And I want us to be astonished in what God's going to do in this place, in this community, in this church, in your life, in the life of others around us. Be prepared to be astonished. So let's get up. Let's walk in the things of the kingdom of God. Let's make a difference. You know, our taglines are be determined to make determined to be the difference and determined to be the change those two things typify what Daniel said today that to do that we've got to move we've got to energize ourselves not because we're trying to build a kingdom for us but we're trying to build a kingdom for Jesus Christ and show people his love the love that we've found together it's the love that we've found that we want other people to know because the world paints a different picture of who Jesus is and I choose Jesus is love Jesus is love and he's put love into my life, that crazy, reckless love. He reached down and set me free, the things of my past, and didn't leave me in my past, but allowed me to build and step forward into the future and the present, but not to hold me back. And my past didn't hold me back the same as it didn't hold Jabez back, but he said, bless me, then enlarge my territory. And I believe God says, now is the time to enlarge your territory. Be strong and courageous. Be bold and strong, for the Lord your God is with you. Amen. 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 Look, great to be with you this morning online and in the building. Coffee's next door. Uh, Please stop for that. And um, some biscuits and chocolate and cake. I believe there's cake this morning. So we've got to stop for cake, but if you arrive late, you're not allowed any. <laughs> just, 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 just saying I don't write the rules, mate. You know, just, anyway, I'm sure someone I'm sure someone will give you their piece. All right, someone will give you their piece. All right, so join join us for that. Uh, Alpha starts, uh, Rob and Jackie are away at the moment. Uh, but uh, they uh, we start Alpha on the 19th of June. And, um, you know, please turn up. We're going to have uh, a light tea. So have tea before you come, but we're going to have the light lunch and we're going to run the alpha videos and run that through. And it's the introductory week. Bear in mind, as I've said to someone this morning, I, I know shift patterns are awkward. You don't have to come to everyone. And I can forward you the alpha video that we use um, from Holy Trinity Brompton if you can't get to everyone. But get to as many as we can. It's going to be an exciting time to learn about God and ask those all good questions and just discover who God is in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Seven o'clock on the 19th of June. Amen. Amen. Well, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord turn his face towards you and bless you today, tomorrow, and every day. I'm not just praying a blessing on your life today. I'm praying a blessing on your life this week and this month that God will move in your life, move by the power of his spirit, the resurrection spirit, that you may encounter him and know his peace and his joy in this life, today and tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Amen.